Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I pray that you had I pray that y'all had a blessed week this week. I pray that God has blessed you with his richest blessings upon you and your family's lives. Well, this is a new month, new topic. And this topic for this month is Sometimes hard when you see things going in the wrong direction. It's hard to do. Let's start, let's start in prayer. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for our early rising this morning. We thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, nose to smell, and the blood that ran one through our veins, Lord God. You've been so good to us. We ask now that this hour, at this time, you will come and speak through me. Lord, kill Travis and bury Travis in the depths of his soul. So that your words come from my mouth, Lord God. And Lord, as the word comes from my mouth, as your words come from my mouth, Lord, till the source of our heart heart, mind, body, and soul. So the seed of it, so that the seed of your word can be planted, be, can be planted by Lord God. And Lord God, thank you, thank you for sending your son to this sinful world to die for our sins. I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us. I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, all this month, the topic is the benefits of being obedient. And when I went, I was now a child. Mama said, Travis, don't do that. Travis, don't do that. Well, I went ahead and did it. A lot of times I got in trouble. A lot of times I almost got hurt because I was not obedient to my mother's instructions. But well, God is our Father. And if we're not obedient, if we're not obedient to his instructions, we're liable to fall and hurt ourselves emotionally, physically, mentally, in every way of our lives. And we're coming from Exodus, coming from Exodus, we're coming from Exodus, we're coming from Exodus, coming from Exodus chapter three, where God called Moses. Now some background on this, this, this. Moses was born in Egypt. His mother put him in the basket. And Pharaoh's daughter found Moses and raised Moses. Moses didn't know that he was a Hebrew. He tried to free the people himself. And they turned on him. So he had to run in the wilderness and now God is calling Moses to go back and save the same people he was trying to save in the past you see Moses doing it his way at first following his plan but how many of y'all know that our plans don't work out sometimes our plans fall, but when we use God's plan, we are successful. So in chapter three of Exodus, Moses is tending the flock of his father-in-law sheep. And he's on a mountain. And God comes from, to him for a burning bush. It's burning, but it's not consumed. And the first topic is divine contact. Divine contact when God comes to you. And lets you know that he's with you. 
that you know that what he's about to ask you to do, you can do it. You see, that was a sign for Moses to see the bush burning and to see the leaves and the branches not on fire. God was showing Moses, I can do the impossible in your life and also in the lives of my people. The question is, do we do we see the signs? Do we think back on do we think back on do we think back on those past experiences? Experiences in our lives. Moses could have said, I tried to say once before, and I ain't gonna do it, God. But but God first got Moses' attention. Has God got our attention? Or are we focusing on something else? Now Moses had to watch them sheep. But his mind went from those sheep to the burning bush. What are we paying attention to, y'all? Is our mind on things of the world? Is our mind on things in our family? Is our mind on things at work? Or is our attention on God and what he is telling them, what he wants us to do? In verses 1 through 4, God gets his attention. And in verse 3, it says, and Moses said, now I turn aside and see a great sight. Why is this bush not burning? Y'all, we got to see God for years. Divine contact. God wants a divine contact moment, moment with us. Will we let him have that divine contact with us? The next one is a divine plan. A divine plan. As I said, but as we said before, Moses tried to free God's people his way at first. He was not following God's plan, he was following his plan. He had to run. He was a wanted man in Egypt. And God is saying, Moses, go back to Egypt and free my people. That'd be like me being one for murder in Atlanta. And going back to Atlanta to help out my mama or my sister, my brother. If I went, if I was go back there and they would have found me, I'd be in jail. But God had a plan for Moses. Verses 5 through 10 of chapter 3. These are the verses that state this. And verse 10 says, Now come therefore, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now this didn't make sense. I said Moses was a more one of men in Egypt. He killed two, he killed an Egyptian. And now God is saying, go back now. And, and then Moses wasn't sure. Th 
then comes divine assurance. In verse 12 of chapter 3 of Exodus, God tells Moses, I'm with you. Go on ahead, I'm with you. Now that took some real trust from Moses to go to a place where he had killed somebody and tell Pharaoh to let the people go. But God had a plan. Moses was raised in Pharaoh's house. So Moses knew how to talk to Pharaoh. But Moses told God, I can't speak. And God said, I seen Brother Aaron with you. And God and Moses said, and said Who will I say sent them? God said, Tell him, I am sent them. Because of his obedience, God's people came out of Egypt. Our obedience can affect the lives of many people to God. Our obedience can change someone's life for the better. Our obedience can bring light into a dark place. And this is called obedient to the call. Obedient to the call. When God calls us to do something, we should do it. Because God has made God has made every pathway, every road for us. That we need. But we must follow his plan, his direction, his instruction. Be obedient to the call. When God calls you and I to something, we have to heed his call and plunge ahead, knowing that he gonna make a way for us, no matter what we face in the journey. Be obedient to the call that God has on your life. You may you may say, I'm not ready for this. I'm not prepared for this. Moses thought the same thing. He thought that he was not ready. He was not prepared for this task that God had, that, that God was calling him to do. But every step of the way, God gave Moses the power, the strength, and the knowledge to do the job. Abraham, what does being or being in the call does do? Is that true? Yeah. God called me to a land for milk and honey. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, in verse one, God, in verses one through four, God, God tells Moses the same thing to, to, to Abraham. He told, he told Abraham, I take to a land flowing with milk and honey. So, so, so God told Abraham and Moses the same thing. 
I will take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. You see, God's message, because God's message didn't change. But these two men, they follow God's instructions. And God's people were freed because they did this. You know what our freedom from whatever is holding us down, whatever has got us locked up, it just may come from being obedient to God's call. I had not meet my wife until I started this right here. I had not get a good job until I started this right here. I had not get a car drive until I started this right here. You see, I Follow God's plan and instruction. Now it's obedient to the call. Now I've been blessed my life. More peace, more joy, more wisdom. I say to you and me, Let's be obedient to God's call. Because God showed Moses that with him, by him sending burning bread, the burning bush, and it was not consumed. Divine contact. Divine plan. God sent Moses to a place where he was wanted. But God's protection was upon Moses. Divine assurance. God says, I'll be with you throughout the whole journey that you are going to have. I say this to you and me. If we are obedient to God, who knows what God has in store for us? If we can handle little stuff that God give us, he just may bless us with more stuff. If we, if we manage that little bit good, he may give us more to manage our lives. I say this, being obedient to God is the greatest thing that I ever did in my life. Whew. Be obedient to the call, please, y'all. You know, Jesus was Jesus was Jesus was obedient to the call too. He went to the cross, shed his blood, and died to save us. It was the, it was it was a divine plan from God, but it meant Jesus had to die to save us. No third day, he he arose to all power in his hands. On the third day, he got up, y'all. And 
And if you want to know this man named Jesus, it's very simple. A, B, C, accept and ask your Lord and Savior. B, believe that he died on the cross for your sins and that he, that he arose with all power in his hand. C, confess him as Lord of your life. Confess that you believe in him. And if you want him to come to your life, you can say this prayer with me. Lord, thank you for dying across my sins. Thank you for the great sacrifice you made for me. Lord, I come now. Giving you all of me. I make you Lord of my life. Lord, I want you to come to my heart, mind, body, and soul, and stay there. Thank you, God, for the for sending your son to down cross my sins. I pray this prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. If you said this prayer, you are saved. And I found a Bible-based Christ-centered church to go to so that you can know more about this man, Jesus. A church that follows the God, that follows God's word. A church that teaches from God's word. Go with God all the way and not halfway.